This is what we call champagne sailing. We left off last week near Madeira, skipping that island because the clock is ticking on our Schengen visas. Hey everyone, we're Sailing Sweet Ruka. I'm Kate, this is Curtis, and Roxy the dog. And we're here to sail around the world via Cape Horn and the Cape of Good Hope. We like to take the sea less traveled and are ready for some serious offshore sailing. So come along for the ride and click subscribe. We are making good time in the easterly trades. We are still headed towards Tenerife in the Canary Islands as we continue to work our way toward the Southern Ocean. We can't let Kate have all the fun. Time for Curtis's new autopilot to keep on ripping along. It's raining! Free boat wash, woo! Can you toss me a hat, please? Hey there, we are about 125 miles outside of Tenerife. A little bit of squalls here and there, not too bad. We've got one reef in the main that we put in last night and just kept it in. The boat's a little bit salty. There's some spray coming over the front. We'll have to give it a good wash when we get there. So you can see there's white caps. It's about force five breeze, which is about 17 to 20 knots. And uh, the boat handles it pretty well. We've got our number three jib up, which is our smaller jib. It's about 105%, which means it comes back just a little bit past the mast. It's got a very high cut foot on it, which means that waves and whatnot don't splash up into it and catch on it and then also we can see underneath of it pretty easily for better visibility especially at night when we're trying to see lights for other boats and uh, we've seen one fishing boat which was a big large fishing boat with no AIS uh, but we did pick him up on radar and see him visually so that was good that's probably what we worry about most out here is fishing boats that don't use AIS and that you can't see on radar very well happens something else Last, was it last night? Oh yeah, talk about last night, what happened last night. The uh, wind shift and the big breeze that came. So last night we saw there was a really big ship approaching, a huge tanker, about 800 feet long. And uh, we also saw the wind was building a little and we had a really close CPA with him, which meant a crossing angle with him. We were gonna be very close together and we decided to give him a little bit of room and slow the boat down. Just about that time, the wind started to come up in a big squall and the wind approached 30 knots. 
which really started pushing us like 10, 11 knots, which was closing on our uh, speed with the freighter or the tanker quite a bit. And those things, they really can't move very quickly and they can't anticipate a four knot change in acceleration speed uh, by us. So rather than uh, risk a possible, possible collision with him, we decided to furl our jib. So we had it down, furled the jib, uh, and then we put a reef in the main as well. And uh, that gave us a little bit uh, more room to maneuver. Then after that, after we had the big blow and a nice squall of 30 knots, then the wind decided just to die and become really fluky with some really screwy waves. Uh, the waves were kind of coming from everywhere and uh, we only had the main up. The wind shifted maybe maybe 80 degrees, 90 degrees. But we kind of went off course a little bit just to follow the wind and stabilize the boat rather than uh, rather than jibe and head, head straight downwind. Uh, so that you'll see a little S in our course if you uh, follow us, but it's okay. We're just cruising, we're not racing. We don't need to uh, maintain maximum BMG at all times. So we just tried to make the boat as comfortable as possible. And that's about it. Kate's gonna eat some ice cream, I think. What do you got? Ice cream. Yay! Ice cream makes Kate happy. <laughs> Morale is important. It seems like ships only come out at night. We are constantly on alert and have proximity alarms for radar and AIS set as we spend the rest of the evening dodging ships while we approach the busy shipping lanes of the Canaries. Coffee cheers. We are here, mostly because Kate drove through the night and I slept. But she ground out a really good midnight shift and now it's sunrise here in Tenerife. This is the island behind us. We've made our landfall and it's time to go to the marina. Now cruising dead downwind. We decide to furl the jib and go under mainsail alone. This is a good wind speed and angle for the spinnaker, but we're in a relaxed mood and want to take it slow. Slow is not how to describe the bustling port of Tenerife. It is quite the surprise to see a huge 400 foot fast ferry moving at speeds up to 40 knots crossing our bow. Um, maybe we should stay out of their way. We have only seen this harbor entrance before on the charts, so we really don't know exactly what to expect. But here we go.
This harbor is huge and well protected. Coming from the small fishing port of Villa do Porto, the huge oil rigs let us know we are back to the big city. The inner harbor entrance is a little narrow and looks intimidating, but it's no problem. This is a very busy time of year, with many vessels preparing for Atlantic crossings. Luckily, we have a reservation. Docking in new places makes most skippers pucker up. Will we stick the landing? Right there? Okay. Is this a 10 out of 10? Tell us in the comments below. After just over four days of sailing, Roxy gets to breathe in the smells of a new island and do a bit of relaxing in the sun on the foredeck. Yeah, you a good girl. Yeah. The people still have a bit of work to do though. Paperwork, that is. It is time to check in at the marina office. We found Marina Santa Cruz to be a very easy and secure place to stop. The check-in process goes as it should, but will we be in for a little Schengen surprise? For now though, we're off to the city to enjoy some après sale activities and maybe a cold beverage or two to celebrate a successful passage. Join us next week as we continue to prep the boat for a long blue water journey and we meet some new and very interesting friends. Want to know more about us and where we are in real time? You can find our tracker on our website www.sweetruka.com. If you enjoyed the video, do us a favor and smash that subscribe button. We promise it doesn't bite. A special thank you to our patrons for supporting our work and making these videos possible. You too can join the crew for as little as $1 and have access to behind the scenes photos, videos, and direct content. Fair winds. Till next week. <laughs>